Almighty Father, we worship that we see ourselves fortunate to have you in presence here. Creator, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We are blessed. We are happy. Lord, have your way. Let your name be magnified. Let there be peace between you and mankind. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey. We are in your presence. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. You can be seated. With a clap of friend for Jesus. The clapping, the clapping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. That be clapping. Worship. Praise him. Thank him. Adore him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Worship. Glory. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Glory. We are in his sanctified presence. I welcome you to the presence of the living God. He invited you to come. You do well. You did well to come. May the Lord give you a package. May the Lord make you one of the women he has planned for in this end time. May the Lord use you for your family. May the Lord use you to make your husband great. Worship. May the Lord use you to carry your family to heaven. Young lady, the Lord keep you pure. Yes. The Lord show that you are a bride of Christ. Yes. May the Lord hear your prayer for a beautiful husband. Yes. Every form of bondage, every yoke over your love, right now in the presence of God, let them be broken. In Jesus' name, I decree. Receive joy. Receive joy. The joy of the Lord. Thank you so much. Yay. Holiness is a movement worldwide. Hold them all. Non-denominational. International Holiness Women Conference 2022. Theme, the holy woman, her life, marriage, home, and ministry. The total woman. The Lord make you a total woman. Thank you. So, we begin in the presence of the Lord. We're talking to you on Christ's spirit in a godly woman. Christ's spirit in a godly woman. And I'm praying as the Holy Spirit moved upon the waters. Yes. And brought forth creation. May the Holy Spirit move in your life. And bring forth renewal. Regeneration and bring forth revival, all kinds of restoration in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Christ's spirit in a godly woman. I'm talking about a godly woman, but let's have a glimpse on the woman still in sin. Let's have a glimpse at the woman still in the devil's covenant. The woman that is unregenerated, that has not yet become godly, let's have understanding of her. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26, the Bible tells us, Say, and I find more bitter than dead the woman. Can you understand? Hey. The woman that is ungodly, the Bible says she is more bitter than dead. When someone dies, a precious person to you, see how you cry bitterly. The ungodly woman makes people cry more bitterly than someone who died. More bitter than someone that has died. Than a precious person that has died. You find someone crying bitterly. You say, what happened? He says, woman. What woman? The ungodly woman has done to him. You find children crying bitterly. Is what a wicked woman has done to them. You see a man weeping with tears. Is what an evil woman has done to him. The society in confusion and pain. What? An evil woman has done to it. He said, I found more bitter than dead the woman whose heart is snared and knits. Not one snare, not one knit, multiple. Snares and knits. And her hands as Buns. They are like glues. Whoso pleased God shall escape from her. Only God can make you escape from this evil woman. Only when you give full attention to God that you can escape from this evil woman. But The sinner shall be taken by her. There's no hope for a sinner. Women suffer from women. As snakes, swallow snakes. I'm talking about the ungodly woman. What she has done. In Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. To 12, talking about the godless woman. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10 to 12. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an hollow. You see her dressing? Hollow. Prostitute. The dressing of such a woman. Provocative dresses with exposed body, exposed back, exposed front, exposed, exposed shoulders, exposed armpits, exposed buttocks, exposed, exposed front, exposed thigh, exposed. I'm telling you, the godless woman, the godless woman. 
Yeah. And behold, they met him a woman with the, with the attire of an hollow and subtle of her. Very wise. She, you may think she's not educated, but her education is from Satan. Her wisdom, wisdom to catch men. She went to school for it. Wisdom to spread evil in the society. She's trained for it. She's trained. I'm talking about the godless woman. She knows what to do. She knows what to say. She knows where to go. Yeah. That is the world. She is loud and stubborn. She knows what to, how to speak. How to make herself known. She is stubborn in her heart. Stubborn. No regard, no respect. No regard, no respect. That is the godless woman. She's married to a man as if she's not married. Yeah. Now is she without now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner society must suffer. She's moving about. She goes about. To cause someone to fall. To mess up families. To mess up the society. That's the godless woman. A godless woman or a sinner. Is a problem to herself. Because by her life. She cannot have peace. By her life. She knows she is without honor. She knows she has lost her glory. Her dignity is gone. So she's a problem to her soul. She's a problem to her God. Because she's a spoiler. Spoiler of the things of God. When she comes there, people, things change. When she comes to where people are spiritual, she will change it. She will change it. By her very presence, some things, some odors will come out and spoil everything. That fragrance will be gone. Because of herself. I'm talking about a godless woman. A godless woman. Yes. Yeah. She's a problem to her husband. Problem to her husband. Problem to her children. And to the society. The church is not left out. Her glory is destroyed. Her beauty is corrupted. Her husband laments and regrets. Her beauty is gone. Has faded off in the presence of the, her husband. Because character is more than beauty. Her children despise her and avoid her. Let nobody say she's my mother. I can't bear the reproach of a woman like that. The society have seen this wretched creature. I have no regard. Should I be identified by identified with her? Her weights are corrupt. Yes, her relations, acquaintances are ashamed and withdraw. They withdraw from her. Let her not be identified with me. Her church is affected by her hypocrisies and outright evil. All the religion she plays in church is a lie. It's hypocrisy. 
is spreading falsehood. <laughs> Very often she can prophesy, but it's a lie. It's a lie. Because her heart is not where God is. The society suffers because of her sins and evils. But when such a woman encounters Jesus, there is a wonderful difference. And that is why the Lord brought you here. Something will be removed from your life. Evil will be removed from your life. Corruption will be removed from your life. Evil spirits shall be removed from your life. Something will happen to you. A new garment is coming from God upon your life. A new garment, a new clothing is coming from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He brought you here for a purpose. And he would do it for you. He has already done it for some. He has changed many women already. It's your turn now. He has said it is your turn now. We shall be watching wonders in your life. When after this conference you'll be jumping up. You'll be celebrating. You'll be running around this place. Hey, hey, I'm changed. I'm changed. I am changed. You will run around. Hallelujah. God has changed me. God has changed me. Praise the Lord. It will happen. Heaven shall rejoice. We are going to deliver a new wife to her husband. Hallelujah. A new woman to her children. A new woman to her society. The church shall get one of the end time evangelists as we shall discharge you from here. Encounter with Jesus. We're going to take the case of the woman of Samaria and see her encounter with Jesus. She was this woman I was talking about. I'm telling you. She was this evil woman. She was this wretched woman. Listen to her case. John chapter 4. Verse 6 to verse 15. The Bible says, Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat down on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritan. Jesus, it was a time. She didn't know. Heaven had arranged for her. Jesus sat by the well. Yes, the spirit had directed Jesus to be there. Because a precious woman was coming that way. A woman God has the mind to change was coming that way. A woman God had the mind to use for the city of Samaria, for the people of Samaria, was coming that way. So Jesus, led by the Spirit, sat at the well. For the conversation to be detailed, the Holy Ghost led all the disciples away to go and look for food. So that Jesus could have proper time with this woman. And the woman would open up fully to Jesus without being ashamed of the, her environment. Yeah. So when Jesus said, give me water to drink, she was shocked. Because the Jews never respected the Samaritans. Why? Wow. They believed that they were corrupted people. When the king of Assyria came so many years ago to 
maybe between 500 to 600 BC, to de deport the ten northern kingdoms kingdom away from Israel. Samaria was the headquarters of that kingdom. Only Judah and Benjamin were left. Then the king of Assyria brought in, imported people of different nations to come into Samaria and mix up with the few the remaining Jews that were there. So there was intermarriage between the Jews and these people of other nations that had their gods. So when the Jews returned from captivity, they never had dealing with Samaritans because they had they couldn't understand who, which people you were they were. Some would claim we're Jews, but say no, no, no record of you. We have record of Jews. But we don't have record of you. So we cannot accept you. So they had no dealing with the Samaritans. Not even to drink water. How can this, how can Jesus now be requesting water from her? A Samaritan. So this is something new. Yes, brother, yes, sister, is something new altogether. Because when they were inviting you, Come to holiness revival movement. God is moving there. God is using this movement, non-denominational, to do final work upon the earth, to bring about the revival of righteousness and holiness. There was a resistance in you. Wow, you are of another church. You are of another denomination. How will you, being an equal member, how will you, being a Baptist member, be coming to a place that is not Baptist? How will you, being an evangelical, be coming to a place like this? So, you look confused. It was actually your time. That's where God overcame and you're here. God overcame you and you're here. It is divine arrangement because the Lord will transform you and send you back to your church to transform that church. The Lord will impact your life will, with eternal truth and open your eyes. You will go and open the eyes of other people. So that's how it was. Now, as the woman wondered, how would Jesus be asking her to give him water. Being a Jew, there's no matter of Jew here. There's no matter of denomination here. We're dealing with the church of Christ, founded by Jesus. We're dealing with humanity, created by God. We're not dealing with denomination. Remove it from your mind. Denomination didn't bond you into this world. It was God that brought you into it. So, we are in the presence of God. Deal with God. Deal with God directly. Forget your denomination so that you can receive from God that which is essential for your life. That which is his mind for your life and for the people that you will influence. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. That's what I'm saying. Don't bring Samaritan Jews matter here. That, is, that has no meaning. I deal with me directly. I am God for both the Jews and Samaritans. I have come with a gift for both the Jews and Samaritans. I am the savior of the whole world. I have come with the power of salvation, the power of liberty to set you free. I've come with life, eternal life to give unto you. Remove issues of Samaritans and the Jews away from you. That's exactly what the Lord is saying. Let denominationalism die in your heart, die before you. We are talking about matters of life. 
We are talking about matters of the living God. We are talking about matters of Jesus. We are talking about matters of heaven, matters of hellfire. We are talking about matters of the rapture that shall soon be coming. It does not concern denomination. It concerns God. Jesus said, if you knew who he that is asking you water, you would have asked of him. And he would have given you living water. Everybody say, living water. Thank you. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. From whence day hast thou that living water? <laughs> Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? And drawn there of himself and his children and his cattle. There are two things this woman was struggling with here. Number one, she was walking by side. She saw Jesus. Nothing was in his hand. So he was saying, How oh, come? How do you draw this water? Nothing is in your hand. And the water is not that it fills to the brim of the well. That you can just use a plate, a, a cup, and fetch it. It's so deep. How then will you do it? How can it be done? Don't walk by side. You have come and walked around. You said, but why are they giving too much testimony here? What am I saying different here? There is a depth of difference here. I'm telling you, your eyes shall soon open to it. Your eyes shall soon open to it. So don't be walking by side. Don't be examining who is the picture. Who is this man I'm hearing of? Is it this, this man that's walking slow, slow, slow like this? That man. God is with him. I say God is with that man. <laughs> so, we walk by faith and not by sad. Again, the woman was having another problem. She was judging Jesus with pride. That these are the things that have been causing the problem. Delaying your salvation. Resisting your salvation. You are judging someone with pride. Is it better than this pastor, my pastor? Yeah, that's the problem. Is this place better than our church? That is your problem. You are looking after the flesh. What are they proud about? We are never proud people. Never proud. So, put away these things that are hindering salvation. Walking by side, judging in pride. Feeling big. Feeling great. That's what Jesus said. Except you be converted and be like this, one of these children. You cannot enter the kingdom. This high-mindedness, many things will be hidden from you. Jesus said, the Bible says, Jesus said, I rejoice in the Lord. For thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them to birth. Even so, Father, for so it has pleased thee. If you are proud, you will see nothing here. You will receive nothing here. You will go the same or go worse. That is how God is. That's how he rewards the proud. For God resisted the proud and gave it grace to the humble. Come down. Remove all those things from your life. And something will happen. Something will happen over your life. And something happened to this woman. Her thoughts nonetheless. So, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall test again. Actually, many of you have been going to churches that have never satisfied you. All that is going on there, all the singing going on there, all the shouting going on there has never changed you. Never. Has not been able to change your life. Year upon year. Whosoever drinketh of this water, this natural water, 
well water will test again. Will test again. You have been practicing a Christianity that has never worked for you. You have always been testing. Your life the same. The shadow of sin has been following you all the time. You do all you do. Even a leader among the people. But there's no change. You read all the Bible, but there's still no understanding, no change. Because you are in the physical realm. Things have not been taken to the spiritual realm. Things have not left the physical to the spiritual. That is why life never changed. Life never got transformed. You have been into ministry itself, but there's no change. There's no change. You have been on the pastor that have been preaching as, as normal. As they have been doing. But never been able to effect a change by the world. Why? Normal thing. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. When flesh ministers to the flesh, the answer is flesh. But then Jesus said, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never taste. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Woman, I have water different from the physical water. I believe it is so here. You are going to hear special messages. Will I say different from the messages you have been hearing? Or else I will say the power backing these messages are different. The power backing this message is a different power. You will see it. You will hear it. You will see the influence in your life. The results shall show. When you return, they will know you came to a place. Exactly. This is truth. Tell the truth and they shall hear it with joy. So, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I taste not, neither come hither to, to draw. Give me this water so I will not taste. I will not even come to this physical water again. The woman, the woman was wondering. Her imagination had carried her away. And Jesus wanted to bring her home. To the matter. Now, see what Jesus said. It's as if he suspended the matter. No, but he didn't suspend it. It is the necessary rope to the matter. He said, verse 16, Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. Ah, then you will know who this woman was. And Jesus was interested to take her to the core of her life, to the heart of heart, where the problem has been. Jesus was interested to reveal her why she could not get salvation. Jesus was ready to reveal her wretchedness. Yeah. This woman of Samaria was an example of a sinful, evil woman. She had disgraced her soul. She had lost her beauty. She had wrecked me and corrupted her society. As we see how Jesus would reveal it. She was indeed a hypocrite. In the worship assembly, she was even talking, and we worship in this mountain. You say we should go to Jerusalem. She was a worshiper. But hypocritical worshiper. Go! Call your husband! Ah. Her encounter with Jesus will bring a change to her. Watch it. 
Watch it. Watch it. When that instruction was given, it pinched her. And in 17, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Thank you. You are ready for, for salvation because you must humble to accept the truth about your life. Humble. He that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You are a sinner. Forget about church work. Forget about ministry. Humble and accept the truth. It's before God. It's before God. I have no husband. But you're staying with a man now. Her sins had come to her. In a brief moment, she looked backward. And Jesus would reveal it to her. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. That is truth. You are emptying your heart. Please, empty your heart before God. You are in his presence. Empty your heart. Don't hide anything. Deal between you and God. Be sincere. Confess. Reveal yourself to God. You are here with him. You, are, you can take any position to pray. You can fast and pray. Come out in the night and pray. Do all before God. Reveal yourself. The Lord said, yes, you spoke well. And he that speaketh the truth shall have mercy. For mercy and truth have met each other. Yes. You did well. For thou hast had five husbands. And he to whom thou hast is not thy husband. In that sayest thou truly. Your life has been wrecked. Men have been wrecked by you. Your life is a shame. Your children are scattered over everywhere. Because of your nature. Because of what the devil is doing in your life. Who knows how many of these husbands have died even? Yet, what has she done that every husband was pushing her away? Wretched lie. Evil lie. Confused lie. Demonic lie. Every husband was pushing her away. She was in the number six husband. Who would? Definitely would push her away. She has no confidence in that number six. That's why he said, I don't have a husband. The woman. The evil woman. You said it well. The woman now said unto Jesus, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Ah. You have revealed my life. You have touched me. You have spoken the truth. You have exposed me. Then, she still wanted to gear up some strength. Our fathers worship in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. This is the hour. The hour cometh. And now is, is the hour. The righteousness is not of denomination. Christianity is not of denomination. Neither here nor there. But faith in the living God. Walking in the truth of the world of God. This is the hour. Don't hide in a church. Don't hide under a name. Don't hide under a denomination. Don't hide under a man of God. It's immaterial. What matters is Jesus. Everybody say, what matters is Jesus. Have you encountered him? Have you gotten the living waters from him? Get it down. Forget about all those things you'll be hiding yourself in. Expose yourself that you might be clothed. 
But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. And they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why you're here. To have access to the spirit of worship. The spirit of God. You are here to have access to the truth of God. So that you can worship God really. That's why you are here. That you might be born again. So that you will serve God around. Yeah. In John chapter 7. Verse 37 to 39. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. The Bible says, In that last, I mean, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man taste, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. River of living water. If you turn your heart to Jesus today, if you accept Jesus today, if you make genuine confession today, if you reveal the truth about yourself to Jesus, the Bible says, What cast of life shall be poured into your heart? The Bible says, Waters, refreshing waters, restoring waters, recreating waters shall pour into your life. The Bible says, Clean waters will be poured into your life. The Bible says regenerating waters shall be poured into your life if you confess and believe. That's the word. That is what Jesus Christ is saying. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Yeah. When you give your life to Jesus, what a wonder, the spirit of Christ will come into you. The spirit of Christ. Then I talk to you about the spirit of Christ in a believer. The spirit of Christ in a believer. In the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 1, to verse 9. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1. To verse 9. There is therefore now. No condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the, after the flesh. But after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus. Hath made me free. From the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin. Condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law. Might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. For they that are, the, that are after the flesh. Don't mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is day, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of him. The Spirit of Christ. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you are none of his. Christ's Spirit in a godly woman. Christ's Spirit in a godly woman. Listen. Many people profess godliness among women. Women 
are more religious than men in real life, in the society. Go to all nations. They are more in number in, in the churches. Churches of all denominations. More in number. More zealous. Yay! So everyone professes to be of Christ. Everybody says I'm a child of God. They have special number to sing. They have testimonies to render. But do you have the spirit of Christ? Is the spirit of Christ living in your life? That is the question. And now the Bible describes this spirit, the nature of this spirit. He is not the spirit of sin and death. He is not the spirit of sin and death. He is not the spirit of sin and death. How are you still lying? And you say you have the spirit of Christ, you have belonged to Christ. Have you heard, have you not heard that if anyone doesn't have the spirit of Christ, it's none of his? He is not the spirit of sin that leads to death. How are you still in immorality? And you say you have the spirit of God. Which spirit of God? And you even speak in tongues. Why are you troubling the society? Why are you deceiving the church? He is not the spirit of sin and death. Why are you still in witchcraft and you say you are a child of God? That the spirit of Christ is in you. That is pretense. That is hypocrisy. No, he is not the spirit of sin and death. No. No. So you can't be a sinner, a thief, and say you have the spirit of God. No, he is not the spirit of sin and death. Again, he is not the spirit of the world. He is, we have not received the spirit of the world. Why are you so full of worldliness? Full, full of the beauties of life, pursuing them, running after the jewels, the jewelries of the world. Your mind is on your clothing, special clothing, to, in, in, to impact your, your society, your environment. Is that the spirit of Christ? You're high-minded by dressing. But what you put on, is that the spirit of Christ? He is not the spirit of the world. Why are you so much pursuing the riches of this life? The greatness of this life? Why are you struggling after name? After prestige? According to the world? He is not the spirit of the world. So why do you say you have the spirit of God in you? No. He is not the spirit of the world. He is not the spirit of fear. You can't do righteousness because of your husband. You can't do righteousness because of somebody there, because of your boss. You can't do righteousness because of the pastor of your church. You can't take decision to serve God. You can't do this because of, because of this. You're under bondage to fear. That is not of the Holy Spirit. Why are you not having the liberty to serve him? Why are you under bondage? Why are you under tension? Why are you not free? Why are you not under liberty to serve Jesus? Why have you been overcome? Why are you full of fear? If you have the spirit of God, then it's not the spirit of fear. I tell you who the spirit of God is. Yes. I tell you what the spirit does in a person. Why? Because if somebody is of Christ, he is born of the Spirit of Christ and has the Spirit of Christ in him. What does the Spirit do then? The Spirit puts to death sin in his life. If the Spirit of Christ is in you, it will put to death. He will put to death sin in your life. In the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The Spirit is now the one guiding you, directing you, leading you. You will not walk after power of sin. You will not walk after, after your, your, your falling nature of sin. No. You will not walk after the flesh. For the law of the spirit of life 
in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. It is a law. It is a principle. It is a power. The presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, if you have received Jesus, shows there is a power in you that, make, that makes you free from the power of sin. There is a principle working in your life. That principle is higher than the principle of sin. Let me tell you, I've just demonstrated it before. There is the law of gravity. The law of gravity says, whatever you throw up, what will happen to it must come down. That's the law of sin. Everybody must commit sin that is born into this world. But the spirit has another law. The spirit of Christ, if he is inside you, he has a law, a higher law. Just as the aeroplane surprises people that it can carry 500 people and move to the air and move across the wind and be going and will never fall. While a light handkerchief like this falls, that is the law of aerodynamics that shows that there is a higher law above the law of the, the, the law of gravity by which if an object is made by the principle of that higher law it shall walk contrary to the law of gravity it shall go to the sky and shall never fall human beings discovered that law of aerodynamics and created the aeroplane now in Christ there is the law of the spirit of the spirit in Christ, the spirit of Christ Jesus, there is that law. And that law says, if the spirit is in somebody, the spirit of God dwells in you. It is going to work out a principle. It is going to work out a law. It is going to work out a power that will make you overcome the power of natural sin. Such that you will live your life and never sin. By the power of the, the spirit of Christ. That is it. That's what. How can you say you have the spirit and you're a sinner? How can you say there's power in Christ? A change is coming on your way. I say a change is coming on your way. A change is coming on your way. A change is coming on your way. Today it shall happen. It shall happen. Remember the law. It's a principle. It's a power. It will work in you. It will transform you. It will deliver you. It will arrest sin. It will remove sin. It will crucify sin. It will smash sin. It will destroy sin. And you will walk in righteousness. Glory to our God. It's a principle of love. Yay! I tell you, it's a simple thing. Miracle will happen today. I say miracle will happen today. The miracle of righteousness. The miracle of freedom from sin is going to happen today. The disciples of Jesus, they saw him walk in the water. They wondered who could walk in the water. They felt that it was a ghost. They cried out and said, no, I am the one. Be peaceful. I am the one. And he was walking in the water very freely as if he was walking on the land. I was coming. Peter said, Lord, Somebody is Peter here today. Lord, everybody say, Lord, if you are the one, invite me to come into the water. Jesus was using a law. He was using a principle. And this principle does not exist on earth. He brought it to the earth. I say he brought it to the earth. Jesus brought that principle to the earth. The principle to walk in water in an ordinary way. That principle came down. And so Peter said, Lord, if you are the one, invite me to come. Immediately Jesus walked out this principle in the life of Peter. So Peter jumped into the water and started walking to Jesus. And never sang. I 
and never sang. He walked to Jesus. Today, a miracle of change is going to take place in your life. You will be free. You will be free. You will walk to Jesus. You will walk to heaven with righteousness. You will walk and be free. You will never sink in sin. You will never commit immorality again. You will not tell lies again. You will not cheat again. Yeah. Power of righteousness. Power of righteousness. Power of righteousness will take over your life. You will be a new creature. You will be a new creature. You will be a new creature by higher power. Higher power. Receive. Higher power. Receive. Higher power. Receive. Glory to our God. Yes, righteousness will cover your life. Who told you that there's no victory over sin in this life? The spirit of Christ. Do you know who he is? I said, do you know the spirit? He, is, he has power. He has law. He has principle. And that principle makes you free from sin. It makes you liberated from sin. And if the spirit of God comes into you, it is done. I say it is done. That the man that the woman that came here and said hello will not know her, her suit of sin anymore. She will go. And when she goes, hey, hey, hey see me here. Say, see who? See who? Who are you talking to? She has changed. I said, she has changed. <laughs> Glory to our God. So that is it. Yeah. The spirit is to establish. The righteousness of God in your life. Romans chapter 8 verse 4. The Bible says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. The righteousness of the law. The law demands righteousness. The word of God demands righteousness. But our body could not because of sin. Our body could not because of sin. But the spirit of God, when you accept Jesus and his spirit comes into your life, the righteousness which you were not able to do by the spirit, not by my, not by your power, but by my spirit, said the Lord, this mountain shall be removed. This mountain of sin that is before Jerubabel. This mountain. That is of sin before Zerubbabel. It shall be removed. It shall come out from your way. That rock shall be broken into pieces. By my spirit see the Lord. By my spirit see the Lord. Receive the Holy Spirit. The spirit of Christ. Accept him. Ask Jesus, let your spirit come into me. Let your spirit of righteousness work out wonders in my life. Remove it. Remove sin. Remove evil. Remove the stubborn heart. Remove the evil spirit from my life. Spirit of God, come on my life. That is what the Lord is saying. Righteousness will take over. It's, it's not by force. It's not by rolling on the ground. It's not by hitting your head on the wall. I won't commit immorality anymore. Hey God, I hit myself. See me, my head is pending me now because I'm hitting it. It's not that. It's by the Holy Spirit. Not by mine. Not by your power. But by the Spirit of God. Righteousness shall be wrought out. Shall be worked out in your life. That is what God wants you to know. Yeah, the Spirit will make you to bear the fruits of righteousness. As it's in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23. The Bible tells us the Spirit will work out the fruit of the Spirit in your life. In verse 22 of Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. 
Yes, the Holy Spirit will cause this character to develop in you. You will see yourself growing from one level to another in righteousness. You will be increasing. The Lord shall increase you more and more. He will walk, walk out and will chisel out anger from your life. He will chisel out pride from your life. He will walk into your spirit humility. He will make you gentle. He will put love in your heart. The love that will drive away fear from you. The Holy Spirit will walk out a new nature. Yes, the spirit of Christ. That is what he will do. When he comes into your life, he is going to make you active every day. Active. He will quicken you. Active. You will, you will be in righteousness every day. He will bring, make you alive. It's like the thing is under a warmer. And it, it remains warm. That's how the Holy Spirit will keep you. you. He will keep you spiritually warm. Righteously warm. So that you will never fall into sin. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. It's by the work of the Holy Spirit. He see it remaining in him. The Spirit is in your life. And he cannot sin. He will work it out. He will quicken your motor body. Again, he, feel, he will fill you with power for God's service. He will fill you with power. Give you anointing for the service of God. You will walk and be happy. You will walk and be blessed. The presence of the Spirit of Christ. He will teach you righteousness. You will just be knowing what to do. Evil things, he will give you suspicion against it. He will tell, no, 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 don't go that way. Don't do it. Don't, don't join him. He will be guiding you. Follow this way. Go this way. He will be guiding you. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, that he will shepherd your life. He will direct your life. He will lead you to where to go. Some, the Holy Ghost led them here. Because he knows what he will do for people. That's why they're here. So, he is going to lead you. He is going to cause you to remember and be conscious of Jesus Christ and his righteousness. He shall bring all things to your remembrance. There's a difference between the spiritual and the carnal. If you have the spirit of Christ in you, then live as a woman that has been recreated in Christ Jesus. This conference will mold spiritual women and equip them with virtues and power for, her, for their home, church, and their ministry. That is what this conference is going to do. I just introduced to you what will be happening here. The Holy Spirit is around. It's moving around. As we're talking, it's moving around. As he sees your heart ready, he drops it into you. As he sees your heart ready, he drops it into you. So, as I have been talking, wonderful changes have been going on. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Don't think that it is until you stand up to pray. No. When, even when you are listening, by the hearing of faith, the Holy Ghost fell upon the Cornelius and his company. Just by the hearing of faith. So, as you're hearing this word, some great changes are happening. Oh, as your heart agrees with God. You know, if, when you enter into the field of, of the magnets, the magnet has its own field. When you enter into the field of magnet, it magnetizes you. Magnetizes you. That's what it does. So, when the Holy Ghost just knows that this person has entered into my field, he drops it into you. This one has entered into my field, receive it. This one has entered into my field, receive it. Hallelujah. Just stand up and be thanking God for what you have received already. And you call on him. Make promise. Lord, I need this miracle. This principle. The principle of righteousness. By the Holy Spirit, I want to be free. Remember the woman of Samaria? Give me this water that I taste now. Ask him, ask Jesus, do this thing in my very life. Do this thing, bring these changes to my very life. I need it. I need it.
higher principle of righteousness. It will work. Invite the spirit of Christ. Tell Jesus to come into your life. You will receive the spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Tell Jesus you will receive the spirit of Christ. Let him come into your life. And do this thing I am saying. You will see a new life. A change is coming. And you will be happy. You will jump. Even this night, the heavy burden shall be rolled away. Higher principle. How can you say you have the spirit when you are still a sinner? No, it's not the spirit of God. You dream, but the dreams, yes, it's a natural thing the Lord gave you. Not the spirit of God. Why? Sin is in your life. Get at the spirit. Get at, the, at Jesus. Invite him. You will see another principle working in your life. Another principle. Higher principle. That will render captive the power of darkness in your life. And free you. You will be free. You will be free. Out righteousness, dead to sin. Sin shall not have dominion over you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's practicalize this thing I am saying. Yes. I'm going to pray for everybody. Raise up your hand before the Lord. Let this thing be practicalized. As you raise up your hand, say, God, practicalize this thing in my life. Let the higher law of the Spirit of God be, work out my freedom. Let that higher law break the power of sin in my life. Then invite Jesus to come and tell Jesus to take his place in your life. Tell Jesus to take a place in your life. Let Jesus take his place. Then the spirit shall come. Let Jesus take his place. Then the spirit shall come. Let Jesus take his place. Let Jesus take his place in your life. Invite him. Invite him. Invite him. Then the Holy Spirit shall enter. He is the spirit of Christ. He is the spirit of Christ. Jesus. Let him come and take over your life. Let him be your savior. Let him be your savior. Confess. 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 The Samaritan woman revealed herself. 
Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe.
I believe, I believe you. 